Hi, I'm Martin Spakenbrink from University College London, and this is a pre-recorded presentation for the 2021 meeting of the Society for Mathematical Psychology. Once upon a time, there was a benevolent fairy emperor. A devastating fire swept through his empire, and he had to find a new home for himself and his... <coughs> Wait a minute! This is supposed to be a math side presentation. Okay, okay, let's backtrack a little. Whether you are in a restaurant deciding what to eat, or in a shop deciding what sweets to buy, or maybe you're a bee deciding which flower to visit, or you're wondering whether to swipe left or right, we are often faced with alternatives with uncertain outcomes and can only learn the consequences of our actions by taking them. This leads to the well-known exploration-exploitation dilemma. Should I choose an option, which I know I like, or should I explore an unknown option, which may be better, but could also be worse? If it is better, I have a new favorite, which I can choose from then on. If it is worse, I would have been better off sticking to my old favorite. How people resolve this dilemma is often studied with multi-armed bandit tasks. This name refers to slot machines, which are also known as one-armed bandits. Each unknown option can be viewed as a slot machine, which has an unknown probability of providing a reward. Choosing an option is then the same as playing a particular machine. By choosing from different machines, you can learn which machine is expected to provide the highest rewards. Unlike in classic bandit tasks, in real life, options usually come with distinguishing features that are predictive of the rewards they may bring. Items on a restaurant menu have named ingredients, and potential dates have hobbies and physical features. Studying how people navigate exploration and exploitation in such richer situations can be done with contextual bandit tasks. Here, the options and the general environment come with features, and by learning the relations between these features and rewards, you can make useful predictions about options which you have never tried before. In contextual bandits, exploration is more pertinent, as it allows you to not only learn about a particular option, but also about all other options with similar features. In prior research, we have investigated human behavior in a variety of contextual bandit tasks. We found that people generally can navigate these tasks well, and that they are more likely to choose novel options when their features indicate that they are relatively good, and that their exploration is guided by uncertainty about the reward function. We also found that Gaussian process regression, a flexible Bayesian form of function learning, which allows for generalization based on similarity, describes people's learning well. However, we also found that a substantial proportion of people appears to ignore the features, learning only the rewards for isolated options. In this present study, my aim is to build on this prior work and focus on three questions. First, are people able to learn feature-reward relations for general nonlinear functions in tasks with more naturalistic options and features? Second, does it matter whether the environment is generally rewarding or provides only punishments or a mix of rewards and punishments? And finally, is there evidence that people learn more rapidly when outcomes are better or are worse than expected? In other words, is there evidence for asymmetric learning rates? Regarding this latter point, evidence is mixed. Some authors find that people learn faster from better than expected outcomes, and this may point to a positivity bias. Others find that they learn faster from worse than expected outcomes, which may be due to risk aversion. To answer these three questions, we developed the fairy game. In this task, participants select trees for fairies to use as their new homes. Trees vary in the thickness and angle of their branches. If the fairies are pleased with the choice, they give fairy dust as reward. If they don't like the choice, they will steal fairy dust. On each trial, a set of five trees is presented. The tree images are created by a generative procedure. Trees with the same features can look slightly different, varying around their prototypical shape. Each type of tree is labeled with a unique identifier. The set of trees remains partially the same over trials, but with a probability of 1 in 5, one option is eliminated from the set and replaced by a randomly selected other one. This way, novel options are introduced repeatedly, allowing us to see whether participants are able to generalize their knowledge and choose a novel option when it is relatively good and shun it when it is relatively bad. Fairies come from different clans. Some clans are generally happy and will always provide some fairy dust. Some clans are generally displeased and will always steal some fairy dust. Some clans are neutral and will give or steal fairy dust depending on the choice of tree. Participants complete six tasks 
with the gain, loss, or mixed reward functions in blocked random order. We used six nonlinear reward functions that were defined over the full space of all possible tree shapes. The six functions were randomly assigned to the six tasks and transformed to provide either only positive, only negative, or both positive and negative rewards. There were two repetitions of each of the three environments, resulting in a 3 by 2 within participants design. All participants completed six tasks of 50 trials each, in a partially random order. We recruited 61 participants from the prolific platform. Because the possible rewards vary between environments and participants, due to the randomness and option replacements, we analyzed performance by the rank of the chosen option, with five representing the highest rewarding option. The plot on this slide shows the average rank of the chosen options over trials, with the top row showing the first, and the bottom row the second encounter of each environment. In the later halves of each game, the average rank is about 4 or higher, showing quite good performance. Although there is a difference between the halves within each game, there are no statistically significant differences between the gain, loss and mixed environments. There are also no differences between the first and second encounter of each environment. Overall then, participants seem to perform quite well in the tasks, with no clear difference between whether they learned from rewards, punishments or a mix of those. Next, we consider generalization of experience to novel options. If participants have learned something about the relation between the features and rewards, they should choose a novel option upon its introduction when its features indicate it is better than the other options, but not choose it when its features indicate it is worse. The plot here shows the probability of choosing a novel option immediately after its introduction as a function of the rank of the novel option. The blue dots represent the probability in the first half of the task, where knowledge of the function may be poorer than in the second half of the task, which is represented as the orange dots. Whilst participants don't always immediately choose the novel option when it's better than all other options, here, here, and here, they clearly choose the novel option more often when it is the best compared to when it has a lower rank. These probabilities are just a probability of choosing the novel option upon its first introduction. In prior research, we found that participants generally take a little bit longer in choosing a novel option. To determine how participants might learn to perform the tasks, we turn to computational modeling. We fitted three classes of model, which differ in whether and how they generalize experience to novel options. First, we consider Gaussian process regression. This proved a useful and accurate model in our prior research with contextual bandits. Gaussian process regression is a flexible Bayesian non-parametric method of function learning. By learning the relation between features and rewards, this model can generalize prior experience to novel options based on the similarity between features. The second model is a hierarchical Kalman filter model, which learns an average expectation over all options in an environment as well as how individual options vary around this mean. While ignoring the feature values, this model can partially generalize experience to novel options through the learned general mean. The final model is the classic Kalman filter. This model assumes the reward for an option is normally distributed around a time-varying mean. As all options are considered independent, this model does not generalize experience between options. All models are fully Bayesian, learning expectations about the expected reward of options and the associated uncertainty through posterior distributions. In all models, we assume choices are made by an upper confidence bound rule. This is a popular and effective decision strategy in bended tasks. The UCB rule promotes exploration by adding what can be viewed as an uncertainty bonus to each option. To allow for some randomness in participants' choices, we use a softmax version of the rule, where the scaling parameter, theta, determines the strictness by which the UCB rule is followed. There is no time to go through the full details of the models, but here are some equations you could pause and look at. In Bayesian learning, the amount of change in subjective beliefs depends on the strength of initial beliefs compared to the noise in the data. For instance, if we have a prior belief about the reward of an option, and then obtain a relatively high reward, the posterior belief involves a shift upwards, which depends on the variance of the prior relative to the variance of the likelihood. If rewards are assumed to be less noisy, the difference between prior and posterior mean increases, hence faster learning for less noisy observations. 
If the rewards are assumed to be more noisy, the learning rate decreases. This foundational property allows us to define a Bayesian form of asymmetric learning. If the assumed noise for higher than expected rewards is greater than the assumed noise for lower than expected rewards, learning is faster for negative prediction errors. Conversely, if the assumed noise for lower than expected rewards is greater, learning is faster for positive prediction errors. A final aspect is stickiness. People often have a tendency to repeat previous choices regardless of their expectations. Sugawara and Katahira showed that prior evidence for asymmetric learning rates may be partially due to not accounting for such choice perseverance or stickiness. To avoid this issue, we therefore also define models which include a simple version of stickiness by assuming that participants repeat the immediately preceding choice with a fixed probability p-stick. Otherwise, they follow the UCB rule. All models were estimated by maximum likelihood and fitted to individual participants' data. This graph shows the fit of the different models. Values shown are the BSC weight, which is an approximation to the posterior probability of each model. For each model, we have versions without and with stickiness, and versions with symmetric and asymmetric learning rates. The transparent dots are fits for individual participants, and the solid dots are averages over participants. The results don't show a clear winning model, although the hierarchical common filter model with asymmetric learning rates and stickiness has the highest average BSC weight. For the GP models, stickiness seems to be an important factor in increasing the fit, whilst for the hierarchical common filter models, stickiness doesn't seem to be a major factor. The common filter model fits relatively poorly. That we don't see a clear winning model may be due to individual differences in their approach to the task. Some people may employ function learning, while others not. In addition, asymmetric learning may be a factor for some participants, but not for others. When we look at the number of participants best fit by each model, we see very similar results. If we define function learners as those participants who are best fit by one of the GP models, we find that roughly 35% of participants learn the relation between the features of options and the rewards. Other participants seem to ignore the features and learn the average reward in an environment as well as the reward for the separate options. In addition, just over half of the participants seem to employ a form of asymmetric learning and quite a large proportion of participants are governed by some form of sticky learning. As the construction of the models follows a factorial design, we can get some more insight into the importance of the components by analyzing the BIC scores with a linear mixed effects model. This should be taken with a grain of salt, but the results are informative nevertheless. Note that for BIC scores, lower values indicate better fit. Hence, we see that the GP models fit better than average, as do the hierarchical common filter models. We also see that the asymmetric models fit somewhat better than the symmetric learning models. And models with stickiness fit better than models without. Stickiness has a smaller effect than average in the GP model. And to a larger extent, this is also true for the hierarchical common filter model. Finally, the difference between the asymmetric and symmetric learning versions is smaller in the models which include stickiness. This is in line with the findings of Sugawara and Katahira, but including stickiness does not eliminate the contribution of asymmetric learning rates. As we found some evidence for asymmetric learning, we finally consider the direction of this effect. These violin plots show the ratio of the assumed noise for negative prediction errors over positive prediction errors on a logarithmic scale. Positive values indicate faster learning for positive prediction errors. The results show substantial individual variation. According to the GP model with stickiness, the majority of participants learn faster for better than expected rewards. According to the hierarchical common filter model with stickiness, the majority of participants learn faster for worse than expected rewards. The extent to which the differences reflect stable characteristics of participants in terms of learning approach, optimism and risk aversion needs further research. In conclusion, we found that people generally performed well in the task with no difference between gain, loss or mixed environments. About 35% employed a function learning strategy and the remaining participants an option-based strategy with some generalization by learning the average rewards in a task. Why was the proportion of function learners relatively low? 
Although we introduced novel options repeatedly to increase the importance of function learning, perhaps the difficulty of learning nonlinear functions and a relatively small number of trials in a task prevented people from accurately learning the reward functions. We also found some evidence for asymmetric learning, but there was no clear direction of this effect. Some people seem to learn faster for positive and others for negative prediction errors. Thanks to Ali for his help in collecting the data, coming up with the fairy cover story and other contributions to the study. And thank you for viewing.